Well, good morning, church. I'm so glad to see you today. Uh, I don't know if you noticed, when you first walked into the room this morning, it was a little chilly. Our heater didn't kick on this morning, and I was like, I'm worried. And then all of y'all came in and warmed it up. It feels nice and warm in here now, doesn't it? Uh, so, great time in worship. I love to hear the church choir sing, and that's you guys. So, thank you for letting me enjoy that again this morning. If you have a Bible with you today, I'm going to have you open it up to the book of James, chapter 1. Last week, we kicked off a new series uh, on the book of James, talking about the idea of real faith and what real and authentic faith looks like. Because don't you know that, that, that real faith is not just about the things we do, it's about the, the belief in God that we have as we sing about it in worship, how good our God is. Uh, and as you're turning to James chapter 1, we're going to start in verse 5. If you have your Bibles and Bible apps, you can turn there. I want to begin with a story. Uh, I'm going to take it back a little bit for you. A uh, story in my life in s- the summer of 2007, as best as I can remember, is when it took place. But my wife and I in the time, this was our PK time. That stands for pre-kids. Um, and so uh, it, it was an interesting time in our life, but it was also a season where we were trusting the Lord in a lot of different ways. And it was our, I, I like to call it our, our top ramen season. Uh, you know what I mean? You ever have one of those seasons where it's like, yep, we got some ramen for dinner tonight. But, but every once in a while, we would splurge and we would go and we'd get a couple of steaks. You ever have one of those nights where it's like, it's time to celebrate, honey. And so we had this steak and I don't remember what day of the week it was on this particular night, but it was, it was the night when our favorite show came on. And I'm not even going to tell you what it is because it'll date it too much. But, but I'll just say, kids used to have to turn on the TV at the time the show came on. All right, I'm just going to put that out there. But we were there, and we had cooked these steaks, and my wife and I was pre-kids, and so we had a dinner table, but sometimes we'd set up our little TV trays. You ever have those? And we sat up, and we're ready to watch the show, and it's a hot summer night. The air conditioner's on. The TV is on. The steaks are cooked, and then all of a sudden, I hear this boom behind me. Boom. And then everything goes dark. Pitch black. And in that moment, I was just like, what? This is movie night. This is like our show night. We got our steaks ready. I'm like ready to cut into this amazing steak and the lights literally went out and I was caught. You ever have those moments where you're like, well, what do I do now? Like, like, what are we supposed to do? Our show is starting. The steaks are getting cold. Like, like I didn't know what to do. But in that moment, uh, we didn't have anything prepared and we were caught in the dark. You ever have a moment like that where you feel like you're caught in the dark? Now, today I want to talk about having faith in the dark. Uh, and so I'm not just talking about when the, the power goes out. Some of y'all live in Simi Valley, right? Uh, you know, the power goes out when the wind starts to blow. Some of you guys, your houses, your power turns off every time the wind blows. But I want to talk about have faith in the dark. We have seasons of our lives that are like that, where maybe we thought something was going to go a specific direction. Maybe we had a plan. You ever have a plan that didn't go the way you hoped? All the time. Someone, someone testify. Someone's like, amen. And testify to that. But we have moments in our life where we think we're going to go this way, and then something changes, and we don't go that way. When the lights go out, what do we do? Today, I want to talk about what we do, because in these moments, these moments where the lights go out, we need our faith to kick in, and we need to look to Almighty God to know what to do and where to go. And so James gives us some practical uh, wisdom for us in those moments when we don't know what to do, in those places where we don't know where to go, where we can't quite see what the future holds or where we're supposed to be. James chapter 1, starting in verse 5, James lays it down, this practical wisdom from the Lord like this. He says this. He says, if any of you lacks wisdom, let him ask God. Turn to the person next to you and say, ask God. If you lack wisdom, let him ask God who gives generously without reproach, and it will be given him. But let him ask in faith with no doubting. For the one who doubts is like a wave of the sea that's driven and tossed by the wind. For that person must not suppose that he will receive anything from the Lord. He is a double-minded man, unstable in all his ways. And what James is getting at is this idea that, that, that for us to pursue God, for us to trust in the Lord, it's not a, it's not a I can tiptoe in, I, I either am putting my trust in the Lord or I'm not. That if I'm looking to the Lord, i got to jump in with both feet 
and drive towards him and pursue him as we did in worship today, as we do every day as we walk in the way. See, we all have moments in our lives where you and I need wisdom. You ever feel like, man, I just need a little wisdom on this. I wish I had some good counsel. I wish I knew what I'm supposed to do. And there's moments where we need wisdom of God in our situations, and sometimes we're even smart enough to ask, right? And what James tells us is that when we find ourselves in moments where we don't know where to go or we don't know what to do, we should ask God. I know it's a novel idea. It sounds so simple. And yet it's one that I need to be reminded of, and I think you do too, that those places where we need to ask the Lord for, the, for wisdom on what to do, and we need to bring those things to the Father. The big idea today, if you're taking notes, is this, that our God has all the answers that we need, um, and, and when we don't know what to do or where to go, our job is to seek the Father, is to draw near to God and ask Father God for what we are to do. See, there's, it sounds so simple, but this isn't our first instinct, is it? Uh, like, at least for many of us, our first instinct isn't to say, man, I don't know what to do. I should ask the Father. I should go to God. I should seek the Lord. I should, I should turn on the music and, and start worshiping God. I should open up a conversation and start talking to God in prayer. I should open up God's word and hear what he has to say. That's not our first instinct, is it? Our first instinct is this, like, let me Google my symptoms, right? Let me go to Google and see what Google knows. Or, or I'll say, hey, Siri, I need your help on this. Like, what's the answer to this question? And we'll go and ask Siri. Today we're, we're in, a, in a strange season. Now we can go to like AI and, and talk to artificial intelligence and ask computers questions because they have lots of information. But today as we talk about this idea of coming to the Lord, we're reminded that, that what we need is not just more information. We need the wisdom of God. We need the wisdom that the Lord can give to us and wants to give to us generously, but we have to come to him and ask him. See, God is the one that can give us the wisdom we need to get through the darkness of night. Whatever dark situation you might be facing or maybe you just went through or maybe it is on the horizon for you, the Lord has everything you need in that moment if you'll simply draw near to him in faith and ask of the Lord. He desires that we would come to him and ask him because he has the wisdom, not the wisdom of man, but the wisdom of God. On the subject of wisdom, there's a man named Roger Ellensworth that said this about wisdom. He said, first a word about wisdom. What is it? We must not confuse it with knowledge. Knowledge is information, but wisdom is application. Knowledge is comprehending facts, but wisdom is handling life. Knowledge is theoretical, but wisdom is practical. See, we're reminded that the Lord wants us not just to have information. I think it's a good thing for us to study and to learn things and to know knowledge and to know facts and details. But there's something altogether different than, than to handle life God's way. Don't you know that I can know all the right answers and make all the wrong choices? Some of y'all like, I can testify to that. I've done that, I've been there, I've walked through that. And the Lord wants us to be a people that have wisdom. See, we can have all of the answers and yet not know what to do. We can know all of the things and miss the big picture of handling life well. See, the Bible tells us that in the book of Proverbs that, that the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. That if we want to understand wisdom, and when the Bible says the fear of the Lord, it doesn't mean like I'm, I'm shaking in my boots, I'm, I'm scared of God. It means that I rightly position God. I recognize that he is God and I am not. That he is the creator and I am the creation. That he is Lord and I am man. And that's not a, like a, a little thing, like I'm going to think small of myself, but it's, it's something that I'm going to make big God as I understand the bigness of our God. But the Bible tells us that there's something important about that because when we find ourselves in those places of darkness, we must simply stop for a moment and seek the Lord because our temptation is to look elsewhere, isn't it? In fact, I've had this conversation with many pastors that, that there's so many of our sins, in fact, every one of our sins, everything that we struggle with in life, if you boil it down, it has to do with these, these things that we're looking to something else besides looking to God. And that leads us down the pathway of addiction. It leads us down the pathway of brokenness and wrong relationships, all sorts of things. Because the Lord wants us to turn to him and it is there that we can find the wisdom of the Lord. But the problem is that sometimes when the lights go out, instead of turning to God, we turn 
to our own devices. We turn to our own solutions. I think of the prophet Isaiah that spoke of this in the people of Israel. In Isaiah chapter 50, starting in verse 10, he speaks to the people of Israel on behalf of the Lord, and he says this. He says, Who among you fears the Lord and obeys the voice of his servant? Let him, I want you to hear this, let him who walks in darkness and has no light, let him trust in the name of the Lord and rely on his God. It says, when the lights go out, trust in the Lord. Rely on the name of of your God. Then he says, the other choice that is ours is verse 11. Behold, all you who kindle a fire, who equip yourselves with burning torches, well, you can walk by the light of your fire and by the torches that you have kindled. This you have from my hand, you shall lie down in torment. What is he saying? Is this like a a threat? No, he's saying to us that when the lights go out, we've got an opportunity, we've got a choice, we've got a decision to make. Am I going to rely on the name of the Lord? Am I going to look to God and when the lights go out? Or instead, am I going to pull out of my pocket my flashlight, my lighter? Am I going to light a match? Am I going to try and find my own way when I find myself in a place of darkness? Or instead, am I going to ask the Lord for the wisdom on where to go? In fact, I don't want to just read that verse and just gloss over it. I want to pray. Can we pray? Father, today we just thank you for your word. God, as your warning to the people of God was so clear, you told them that when we find ourselves in darkness, we must trust in the name of the Lord and rely on our God. But you also say that we could light our own torches and try and find our own way through the darkness. God, many of us have been down that road. Many of us know what that feels like. It doesn't lead us to the the path that you want us to go on. So today, if there's been areas in our lives where we've lit in our own torches, where we've tried to fix ourselves, where we've tried to save ourselves, we want to repent and turn back from those things to the living God. We declare with our mouths and believe in our hearts, God, that we trust in you. In the name of the Lord, the name that is above every other name. We put our trust in you today, in Jesus' name, amen. See, when the lights go go out in our lives, we've got those two choices. We can look to God in his guiding light, or we can break out our matchbook and start to light our own torches. And the choice is ours, but I believe that the Lord's best for us comes when we trust in the Lord, when we lean into him in those moments of darkness, when we look to him for what is to be next. See, if we choose to silence the noise and the chaos of darkness, we can learn to focus our eyes on the light of God's direction. It's why the psalmist would say in Psalm 119, verse 105, one of my favorite scriptures, I have a lot of those, but but I'm going to say it anyways. He says, the Lord, your word is a lamp to my feet and a light to my path. It's one of the reasons, actually, I saw this picture. An amazing Christian artist creates all of these amazing artwork, these graphic pictures. But when I saw that, I thought, man, that is exactly what the Lord does. Your word is a lamp to my feet and a light to my path. When you don't know where to go, look to the Lord. I'm not telling you anything new. But I'm reminding you of something that that I need to be reminded of in my own soul. That when I don't know where to go, I need to ask the Lord. Because he gives generously to all without reproach. So two practical tips I want to give from this scripture. When when the storms of life hit close to home and the lights go out, and not just a transformer goes out like was in my story, but when things take place that, that take us and shake us, what do we do? Number one, when darkness falls in our lives, I want to encourage you to look to God for wisdom, for strength, and for direction. Say those with me. Say wisdom. Strength, Strength. direction. Direction. The Lord wants us to turn to him for wisdom, for strength, and for direction. He says, if any of you lacks wisdom, let him ask God who gives generously, and it will be given. See, what is wisdom? We had a quote about wisdom a moment ago, but wisdom is, I looked up the definition because I'm like, like, I'm a word nerd, um, self-professed word nerd. My wife used to make fun of me, and now she's a word nerd too. I converted her. But, but I like to look up words and what they mean. But wisdom literally means the skills in the affairs of life, practical wisdom, wise management, as shown in forming best plans and selecting the best means, including the ideas of sound judgment 
and good sense. Don't you want to be a person that has good sense? Some of you are all like, I need some of that good sense. I only got like, I don't have any sense. But the Lord wants us to be a people of wisdom, a people that, 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 that knows the right way to live, that doesn't just have the information, but can live life the best way possible, a life live close to God and under his protection. I'll just tell you, friends, that from the time I was a young man, I made it a pursuit of my life when I understood this, this principle as I met the Lord Jesus and I began to read God's word that wisdom was something that was worth searching for. That to, to pursue God and to have this wisdom that comes from the Lord, it was something worth spending my entire life searching for, like a buried treasure. And I'll just tell you, it's been the pursuit of my life, not that I consider myself a wise guy, but I do, I do thank the Lord that God has given me practical wisdom for how to live my life in a way that's led me not to a place of brokenness, but a place filled with joy as I experience the grace of God. And I'll just tell you and testify to you that, that we need to look to the Lord for wisdom, for strength, and for direction because our God is so generous. He desires that you and I would seek him and find him, that, that as we ask for wisdom, that he would grant us wisdom. Some of us are dealing with situations that are above our pay grade and we need the wisdom of God to bear in our lives. Ask him, seek him, pursue him because he is generous to those who seek him. So we've got to get our eyes on the Lord. Now it's funny, as Matthew was in rehearsal and he began to quote this entire psalm from memory, I thought, Lord, you're doing something. You're wanting to use this verse. Because in my message is Psalm 121, verses one and two. I'm just going to read the first two verses. Matthew could come up and recite it, the whole thing again, from memory, but I'm going to read it so I don't mess it up. It says, I lift up my eyes to the hills. From where does my help come? My help comes where? From the Lord, who made heaven and earth. See, he's saying to himself, he's saying, where does my help come from? Does it come from the hill? No, 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 no. no. My help comes from the Lord. The God who made heaven and earth, the creator of all things, the one that holds the universe and and orders the stars and orders everything in this universe, that God is my God. So I look to him. I'm not, I'm not pulling out my lighter so I can light a match, so I can light up my own torch and find my own way. I'm saying, Lord, lead me. Lord, show me where to go because I look to you for wisdom, for direction. See, we lift up our eyes to the Lord. My help, he says, all the wisdom I need, all the things that I need to get through this life, it comes from the Lord and the psalmist, he understands it. But we also come to the Lord, not just for wisdom, but also for strength. One of my favorite Psalms, Psalm 121, I got a lot of favorite Psalms too, but but it's it's from David. And David, if you don't know David, if you haven't read through the story of God and read the, the life of David, David was like a mighty man of God, not just a mighty man of God, he was a warrior. In fact, he was like, he was like a man's man on the battlefield. All the other men looked to him to see what David would do because he was the he was the most fearsome battlefield king in all of Israel's history, and he did amazing things. In fact, it's this David that slayed the giant Goliath. So he was a man that understood what it was to to lead on the battlefield, and he said this in Psalm 121. I say all that because he says, Psalm 20, verse 6, he says, Now I know that the Lord saves his anointed. He will answer him from his holy heaven with the saving might of his right hand. Verse 7, he said, Some trust in chariots, and some in horses, but we, we trust in the name of the Lord, our God. Can someone say amen to that? Amen. We trust in the name of the Lord, our God. They will collapse and fall, but we will rise and stand upright because we look to the Lord in those moments of darkness for strength because the Lord wants us to, to look to him for strength in those moments of weakness. David, a man who could have very easily said, man, I've got a big army. I've got a strong group of people. I've got these mighty men of valor that are on my team. And we've got horses and we've got chariots and we've got javelin missiles and we've got tanks. Okay, not those last ones. But we've got all the things that we need. We've got all the strategies for war. But I don't trust in those things. I trust in the name of the Lord. The name that is above every other name. The name by which every, every knee will bow and every tongue confess. That every man will stand before almighty God His name is the name that I trust because I look to the Lord for strength. Now, there is a place for strategy. 
There's a place for, for might and, and ability. But what David is saying is that those are the things that I don't look to for. Uh, I, I, don't, I don't trust in those things. I trust in the Lord. That even when I don't see what he's up to, I trust him. And I can sing songs like we did in worship. Even when I don't see what's, what's at the end of the tunnel, I can say, God, you are good. All my days you've been faithful. So I'm going to sing of the goodness of God. As I say that, I think of Paul and Silas in the prison, singing worship and praise in the middle of the night as they're in shackles, literally in prison. The Lord breaks open the prison. It's an amazing story. But I, I just think of what it would take to have that sort of abiding faith that even in the midst of a hardship and a trial and a struggle, they can praise and glorify God and say, God, even though right now I'm not where I want to be, I can praise you because you're good. He is so worthy of our praise. See, this is why the Lord commands us and commends his people to not be overcome by fear as we look to the Lord for strength. I think of the word of the Lord in Isaiah 41 as he speaks to the people through Isaiah the prophet. He says, fear not for I, God, am with you. Be not dismayed for I am in your God. I will strengthen you and I will help you and I will uphold you with my righteous right hand. And I love the imagery of that because what the Lord is getting at, what he's wanting them to imagine with their mind is that, that we walk with the Lord and, and like my little boys come and walk with me, they hold daddy's hand. And I know that they're gonna stumble. <laughs> I just know it. And when they stumble, I uphold them by my strong right hand. Because I'm stronger than them, I'm bigger than them, I'm able to hold them up and keep them from stumbling. That, that even when they, their, their, their feet stumble, I keep them from falling face first. The Lord wants to have that sort of intimacy, that sort of close relationship with you and me. He wants us to look to him in those moments of desperation, those moments of darkness, and find our strength in the Lord. Because it, when we trust in the name of the Lord, he's able to uphold us with his righteous right hand. So when the lights go out, we gotta look to the Lord for strength. We gotta look to him for wisdom and for strength and finally for direction. When we look to the Lord for direction, the, the Bible tells us that the Lord will lead us and guide us. As we read in the Psalm, Psalm 119, but also Psalm 23 verses one through three says this. It says, some of us are familiar with this one. You might have this one memorized or in the back of your head rolling around. It says, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me. Say, he leads me. He leads me beside still waters. He restores my soul. When I'm wounded, when I'm hurting, when I'm broken, he can bring restoration to my soul. He leads me. Say, he leads me. He leads me in the paths of righteousness for my namesake. Friends, I want you to hear the heart of God. He wants to lead you. He wants to be your shepherd. Here in the psalm, but also Jesus speaks of this, and many times throughout the scripture, the Lord speaks of wanting to be the shepherd of his sheep. And y'all, we don't understand what it is to be a shepherd, but, but Jesus did. He wants to lead us. He wants to guide us. He wants to, to be the one that shows us which way to go. That's why James exhorts us to, if we lack wisdom, to ask God. And wherever you're at in your life, the Lord wants to be your shepherd. He wants to lead you and to guide you. And a shepherd leads the sheep not necessarily where they want to go. Can I just say that? Sometimes the sheep want to go to dumb places. They want to go to places. I've watched, I've watched videos of sheep. And I, I like to watch it because I'm like, you guys are so dumb, you're going to just jump off a cliff. But a shepherd's like, no, 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 go over here. And a, guy, a shepherd leads them to where they need to be. Maybe not where they want to be, but where they need to be. Because they're going to go over here into the desert. And they're like, no, 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 come over here to the water so you don't die. And a shepherd not only keeps them and guides them to where they need to be, but he also protects them from the wolf that wants to devour them. We've all seen stories of sheep wandering away and being devoured, but, but I'll just tell you that the Lord wants to be that shepherd. He wants to guide us in where we should go. He wants to, to lead us. But I'll just tell you that, that even as we talk about this following in the Lord, I just want to say to you, this isn't a matter of doing. It's a matter of having a relationship with the shepherd and simply listening to his voice. This isn't like a performance thing like, oh, I didn't obey perfectly so God doesn't love me anymore. This is, that would be legalism. The Lord wants, wants us to follow him. He wants us to pursue him. He wants us to, to ask him when we're in need of wisdom and he gives so 
very generously. See, but the reality is this. It takes humility to ask God, doesn't it? It takes humility to come before the Lord and admit, God, I don't know where to go. The lights are out. I don't see what the future holds. But the, the Bible tells us that when we look to the Lord, when we ask the Lord, he answers us and he meets us. He wants to give to us generously. My last small point, don't worry, this is a small point, is that when the darkness falls, sometimes our temptation is just to stop. But when the darkness falls, we must not stop moving. We must keep pursuing the things of God. Keep drawing near with faith to the Lord. See, the Bible tells us that, that when, we, when we're in need of wisdom, we need to ask the Lord. We need to keep pursuing the Lord. And I'll just tell you a practical bit of wisdom the Lord uh, someone gave to me a long time ago I want to pass on to you is this. Is that sometimes we're in moments in our life where like, it feels like the lights just went out. I don't know what I'm supposed to do. And so very often the Lord's answer would be simply be faithful to what I've called you to do already. Like, but I don't know what's next. And I say, well, keep doing what God's called you to do now. Keep being faithful. There's moments where we can't, we feel like, man, is God here? He's very near to us. But there's moments where we wonder, Lord, are you there? Are you still with me? James says, let him ask in faith with no doubting. For the one who doubts is like a wave of the sea that's driven and tossed by the wind. I think about a wave of the sea or I don't know why I imagine myself in a little floaty in the middle of the ocean. And if I'm not moving in a direction, that wind is just going to blow me around. The waves are just going to push me around. And what he's saying to us is that, that as we draw near to the Lord, as we ask the Lord for what's next, he will direct us and show us which way to go. Because waiting on the Lord doesn't mean I stop doing anything at all. It doesn't mean that. It means simply that I wait for the Lord, for him to do what he wants to do. See, perseverance is often the most difficult when the lights are off, but it's in those moments that we must draw near to God. We've got to press in to the Lord, draw near to the Father. It's most difficult in those moments. I want to read one final song or one final verse today, and then I want to pray and I want to invite the Lord to do what he wants to do. Because I believe that as, as the Lord put this verse on my heart, I believe the Lord wants to speak something to somebody today. Uh, and this is a prophetic word that was given to the people of Israel, but I believe the Lord is still speaking. His word is living and active. Isaiah 42, 16. I want you to hear these words. He makes this promise to the people of God. He said, And I will lead the blind in a way that they do not know. In paths that they have not known, I will guide them. They don't know where they're going, but God does. He said, I will turn the darkness before them into light, the rough places into level ground. You ever go through rough places? These are the things that I do, says the Lord, and I do not forsake them. Friend, I don't know what you're going through today. I don't know what struggles you might find yourself in. I don't know if you're going through a smooth road or a rough one. But I just want to give you, I want to testify to you today and say, this is the thing that the Lord does. If we'll draw to him, if we'll draw near to God in faith, if we'll cry out to God in those moments where the lights are out and we don't know where to go, God will take us from darkness to light. He'll take us from rough patches to smooth ones. But he'll only do that if we're willing to cry out to the Lord. If we're willing to, in that moment of silence, in that moment of darkness, in that moment when the lights go out, to say, God, I'm going to trust in the name of the Lord. Where my temptation is to go, get, to go get my lighter out and start lighting my torch. Try and find my own way out. God, instead, I'm going to rely fully on you. Because I believe, God, that you give generously to those who ask with faith. So I want to do that today, friends. I want to invite the Lord to, to give us his wisdom. Maybe there's an issue or a struggle that you're dealing with. Would you just bow your heads with me as we respond in faith? Father, today we thank you for your word. God, we thank you for this practical bit of faith that, that we need to draw near to you in moments where we don't know what to do. So God, today I pray for those that might be in a, in a rough patch today. The road is rough and that 
it's pretty dark. God, we don't look to ourselves. We don't look to the the chariots or the horses or the strategies or anything else, but we look to you. We trust in the name of the Lord. Because God, you are our strong tower. You are our strength and our shield. You're the one in whom we trust. So God, today we pray for wisdom. We ask you for your divine wisdom. We know that it's not like the wisdom of man. But Holy Spirit, we invite you to speak. We open our ears to hear. Give us your wisdom. And God, if there's been things that we've been tempted to, to turn to that aren't you, today we just want to repent and say, God, we're done with that. We're done turning to substances. We're done turning to relationships. We're done turning to anything else that was never meant to satisfy us. We put out our torches and we look to you, Father. We invite you to lead us like our shepherd because you are the good shepherd. Let us hear your voice. Let us follow. We trust in you, Father. Father, with every head still bowed and eyes still closed, perhaps you're here within the sound of my voice. And you don't know the voice of the shepherd because you don't know God. I want to give you an opportunity in just a moment to respond with faith in the the saving work of Jesus Christ. The Bible says that, that, that he wants to know us. He wants us to have a relationship with him. But the Bible tells us that sin has separated us from God. But the good news is that we don't have to earn our way back to God. We don't, have to, we don't have to give in the offering tray. We don't have to serve the Lord. We don't have to do those things to earn his grace. We simply receive it by what Jesus did on the cross through faith. The Bible says it clearly. It says if you confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, that you will be saved, that you'll be restored in your relationship with God. So if that's you today with every other head bowed and eye closed in prayer really for you, I want to give you an opportunity to respond in faith. It's not about joining this church. I don't want anything from you. This is between you and the Lord. But I want to respond and I want to agree with you in prayer if that's you today. Within the sound of my voice, if that's you, you say, I want to say yes to Jesus with every other head bowed and eye closed. Would you just lift up your hand so I can agree with you in prayer today? If you're in the worship center, you can raise up your hand. If you're watching at home, you can raise up your hand. The Lord sees you right where you are as well. But if that's you and you're praying this prayer for the first time, I want to invite you to pray this between you and the Lord. You can say this. Lord Jesus, I believe that you are the Son of God. I thank you for dying on the cross for my sins. I ask you to forgive my sins and give me the gift of eternal life. I ask you into my life and heart to be my Lord and Savior, and I choose to follow you from this day forward. And everyone said amen Amen and amen. Well, church, Matthew's going to lead us in a song in just a moment, but we're going to come to the Lord's table as we always do, and uh, I want to invite you to stand to your feet right where you're at right now. This is where we get to say, all rise. Make your way to the tables in the front. We're going to grab the elements of communion, the bread and the cup. We're going to bring them back to our seats, and we'll eat and drink in a moment together as we sing this song. In Christ alone, my hope is found. He is my light, my strength, my song. This cornerstone, the solid ground, firm through the fierce drown and storm. What heights of love, what depths of peace. Still, the striving sees my comforter, my all in all. Here in the love of Christ, I stand. In the love of Christ, I stand. There in the ground. His body lay, light of the world by darkness slain, then bursting forth in glorious day, up from the grave he rose again. I 
am his and he is mine born with the precious blood of Christ no guilt in life no fear in death this is the power of Christ in me I like this from life's first cry to final breath Jesus commands my destiny no power from hell no scheme of man could ever block me from his hand till he returns or calls me home here in the power of Christ I'll stay.